Okay, what is going on everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It is your host TKK here, and we are back with another set of tournament replay analyses. This time, we are taking a look at Little Cup Premier League. We're actually looking at my team's semi-final matches, so if you're interested in high analyzing excuse me, some high-level Little Cup gameplay, feel free to stick around. There are timestamps below for all of the games from this week. Um, obviously, very behind when it comes to the schedule here, but I definitely wanted to get this out to you guys. Um, so we could talk about it um, and analyze these games because there's a lot of really good ones. So let's get right into it. Before we do, if you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe, I would very much appreciate it. It helps me out a ton. And I think we can get right into the game here. Number one, we have Mendes facing off against Pradij. Uh, very highlight match in my opinion. We have two uh, really great assessors playing against each other. Mendes has been having an incredible tournament all uh, at this point. I think it's like 5-1. and one. Uh, across SM and SS, which is, you know, the SM is a tough metagame in its own right. Um, so he's been doing great there. Uh, Pradij, obviously uh, a very good player as well, uh, having having a great time in circuit, did really well on seasonal, and I think is having a good tournament as well. So yeah, uh, really great match. I'm really excited for these because the two players are very strong. And right off the bat, we see a pretty interesting matchup. So uh, Pradij is using a Pori Pinch squad uh, with most likely a Scarf Porygon, just based off of how slow uh, the team is here. Um, so that can be scary. We have to be very careful about letting our Pawnyard get trapped because at that point, um, once it gets removed, if it does get removed, then Porygon can try attack and kind of mess up our team if it's able to get a boost. Um, from our end, I'm interested to see what our own Porygon can do. Whenever you see a Pharaoh team, that means if you're an offensive Porygon with Ice Beam, uh, that can hit really hard into the squad and they will get worn down over time. So that's one thing I'm looking out for. We have a Grookey plus Diglett core, which I'm not huge on, uh, just because of the lack of synergy there with EQ and Grassy Terrain. So I'm interested to see if it's maybe like a... Um, Earth Power uh, Special Diglett. I'm kind of forgetting the sets at this point. It's been a couple of weeks and a lot has happened since then, but <clears throat> I do like our Grookey. It looks relatively good. The combination of our Grookey with us Mianfu should be able to overwhelm the two standard fight resists they have, uh, the Coughing and the Natu, especially because we're using a Ponyard team, which should, in theory, be able to get rocks up versus a Natu squad. Obviously, there's always a chance of Pradij going uh, hard Natu on rocks, but that's not as likely, especially given the fact that uh, his fight res you know, when you're using a Pori Pinch squad, you're already, you know, you're adding another f uh, fighting week. You really want to preserve your fight resist, so preserving not to and not risking it generally is uh, the play. So we should be able to hopefully get rocks up and then from there overwhelm the coughing and the not to, and then uh, our own Grookey and Mianfu might be able to break through. Um, our Diglett might be able to do some work, uh, although it's probably, it, once it gets one kill, if it does get a kill at some point, it will just get counter trapped uh, by Trap Inch, but yeah, you guys get the idea. So let's get right into the game here. It should be a good one. One thing to note is that when you are facing off against Pori Pinch, you might want to try to preserve your Mianfusa Violet just so you can take a plus one try attack. So maybe in this type of situation, Mendez leads off with Coughing to preserve the preserve the Violet, um, while Pradij might lead off with Mianfu because he wants to knock the Mianfu, obviously, and uh, force a sequence where uh, eventually Pawn can come in uh, because you know Pawn Coughing uh, can eventually force in Porygon. That's going to force in uh, Pawn. And then trap and shoot. You guys can kind of get the idea uh, when it comes to like, domino effect uh, from the lead sequence. So let's get right into the game. Um, we talked long enough at this point. So we're going to see the coughing lead versus Mianfu lead. So, yep, Mendez correctly, I would say, uh, preserves the Mianfu's Violet here as he's going to get faked out. That's fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to see a U turn right off the bat. Uh, tricky turn for Pradij. What do you do here? Uh, coughing is definitely hard to switch into. And Mendez is going to make the right play. It is going to go for that Fire Blast. Um, as that's going to hit everything neutrally on the squad. And it unfortunately dodges the Fire Blast here. Removing Coughing, as I said, would be huge. Um, and getting 30-40% would have been great in this scenario because of what we talked about earlier. So, um, Also, the same thing goes for Mendez. Uh, I think keeping coughing healthy is very, very important because of the fact that you don't have a lot of, you don't even have a backup fight resist uh, like they have not to. We don't have that, right? So keeping coughing very healthy, I think, is really important. So in this scenario, where we, I think we end up trading damage. I don't know if I would do this because you can see, yeah, we do 
and we get a burn off, but now their Mianfu becomes so hard to handle, and since we haven't been able to knock it or anything, we can't even trap it with Earthquake Diglett that easily, um, especially if we get terrain up, right? So, <clears throat> definitely have to play this a little bit uh, safer. We're going to dodge a Fire Blast here, which works out pretty well, um, as his coughing is burnt, and we're going to pivot back into the Fu, trying to cover... Uh, for, I guess, pretty much everything. <laughs> uh, I guess, most importantly, um, maybe the Trap Inch, maybe the Natu, just being able to fake that out and kind of go from there. So, we're back to square one. Uh, we're seeing Mianfu on Mianfu action. Unfortunately, we lose this tie here, meaning that we aren't in the best of spots as we decide to trade the knockoffs here. So, down goes the Mianfu Zivilite. Obviously, we can't risk HJK, um, but we don't really have a great switch in, so uh, Coughing is going to take one and it's going to drop to the next uh, knockoff. So, this is what I was talking about. Very early in the game, we've already lost our Coughing, and that means we've lost our Fight Resist, and it also means that the next time Mianfu comes in, let's say, on, I don't know, a uh, Pawnyard, uh, HJK is going to be very, very difficult to switch into. So, yeah. Okay, so Porygon comes in to threaten the revenge kill here as Ferris Seed is going to come in on this turn and we correctly go for the Ice Beam. Really nice play here from Mindy's. Getting a nice high roll, 40% on the Pharaoh is huge. We do need to preserve this Violet. A lot of times in this scenario, I like to sometimes just go for a second Ice Beam into the Pharaoh because they may knock, they might Stealth Rock, uh, they're most likely not going to T-Wave. Um, Although it's not guaranteed, right? Um, so getting another Ice Beam off and then you know, basically breaking through the Pharaoh Seed I think is really, really helpful. But in our case, we're not really that Pharaoh weak. Pharaoh isn't... The only thing that Pharaoh's blocking is our own Porygon. And you know, breaking for yourself can be really helpful, but keeping our speed is really valuable here because, as I said, Natu and now Mianfu is a huge threat. So Mendez makes a, uh, a, a the correct play and decides to go to Ponyard, uh, preserving uh, the Scarf and the speed really as um we are going to go for those rocks and get those up so that's going to help wear down that not to wear down that coughing but again mianfu comes in and we don't have a switch and we decide to go mianfu of our own we're able to get a fake out here and it comes down to a speed tie here uh, and we unfortunately lose it this could have been could have been great right if we win the speed tie uh perhaps hjk knocks this thing out and then you know they lose Mianfu and we're in a really great spot, but we end up losing a pretty crucial tie here. We had to go for it, unfortunately we lose it, and then from there, things are starting to look tough because Mianfu will just continue to be uh, annoying for us. So we're going to get a nice Ice Beam off, get some good damage on the Natu. It's pretty much dead uh, now to rocks, <clears throat> which works out well. But again, Mianfu can slow U-turn in, and we don't have an HJK switch in. We're going to go Diglett. Um, it is going to get knocked out, and... Uh, now our Porygon can come in and try to make something happen, but again, they can just sack Natu, see what we lock ourselves into. We lock into Tri-Attack, they're going to go Pharaoh, and you can kind of see where this is going already. It's not looking too great. T-Wave on this turn. Uh, double in the Pori here, really smart play for Mindiz, catching that Mianfu. Really, really heads up, understanding what Pradija is going to want to go for and trying to keep himself in this game. But our own Porygon is still forced to take a fake out. We're going to get a Tri-Attack off. We actually failed to knock this thing out, which is pretty unfortunate. Uh, not sure if that was a, a roll or not, but it doesn't matter because Trap Inch can come right in, first impression, knock us out, and this game is pretty much over, unfortunately. So tough roll there with the Mianfu. Not much you can really do about it after losing the tie. We really needed one of those things to go in our favor, and perhaps from there, we would have been able to win this game, especially given the fact that Pharaoh was getting lower, but that's just the way it is. Not much you can do, and the rest of this game isn't really that interesting, you know. We're going to see us just kind of struggle to break through. We're going to get some full paras, Iron Head, full para, and uh, full para again, and that is going to be the game. So definitely unfortunate. There's a lot of full paras at the very end there, and although those were unfortunate, I'm not denying that, um, it's... Uh, I don't think those sealed it as much as missing out on that roll versus the Foo and losing that initial tie versus the Foo. But hey, that's just Pokemon. That's just Little Cup. <laughs> if you guys have played the tier, you know. And I think we can leave it at that. Well played to both ends. Um, and we can pause it there. Okay, and here we have the second game. We have um, uh, Well facing off against Ace. So pretty great matchup. Two really strong players here. And, <clears throat> excuse me. We have uh, a pretty 
I would say the teams are actually pretty cool as well. So we see Ace is bringing a Carvana offense with a Fungus, um, and we're bringing basically a variation of the Canadian Spikes team. Right, excuse me, with a with a Tyrant over the Carvana, I believe, is what's usually on the squad. So we wanted to go with the Tyrant. We thought it would be kind of cool into this matchup, and we end up having, I, I would say, a pretty decent matchup here. Our Timber looks pretty good, obviously, being able to keep the Carvana uh, Ponyard in, in check. It is going to struggle against Natu, but that's one of the kind of nice things about having a Tyrant, because you can um, use Natu as kind of a setup opportunity. Obviously, they have Trap Inch to help, you know, offset that, and, you know, there's no denying that. So we'll have to see if we can break past that, but this game ends up being a little interesting, uh, for sure, uh, in terms of sets and everything. So let's get right into the game here. We're going to see the Dwebel lead, obviously, from our end, as the opponent decides to lead off with Carvana. Good play from their end, because obviously we can... They can, like, you know, theoretically, like, flip turn out of there, probably bring us down to a uh, pretty low uh, amount of health and then maybe go into like pawn or something after or like trap inch after in first impression us or something like that uh so turn one we're actually going to see a carvana hydro pump right off the bat so you don't see special carve really ever in, in ss so that's really cool to see um unfortunate situation for us for sure and uh we're gonna go grookey on the next turn and we're gonna try to obviously threaten this thing out with a grassy glide and uh we're gonna see that well is gonna make a prediction of a switch try to get a knock into the team or something like that and unfortunately is going to just catch an ice beam from ace pretty tough turn here if i was ace i feel like from everyone i understand well's play like you know you know ace is probably gonna want to preserve this but I can also see it maybe from Ace's side that, hey, um, <clears throat> the Grassy Glide is so obvious that it's not, um, and the Carvana maybe isn't as valuable anymore, given the fact that, you know, Timber still exists, and uh, that can keep it in check. Uh, so I don't know, this play is definitely tricky, and I think Ace just got the better of well in this scenario, and really set us behind in the first two turns, so... Um, Perhaps if I was well, I might have tried going Timber at this point. Um, instead of going uh, Grookey and activating my Seed, I would have maybe just gone into Timber and tried to just knock and make progress in that sense. Um, just because at that point, you know, Ace's Carvana really can't knock you out one hit, one hit KO you. So I don't think Ace has really any reason to stay in. And you can try to force progress onto the Fungus, knock that thing off, maybe open it up for Acro later on or your Tyrant or whatever. <clears throat> you may think um and you can kind of go from there so and that would have also maybe opened up the potential for the not to come in and then from there you can uh set up your tyrant and kind of go from there but uh, nevertheless carvana was always gonna be problematic for this type of build just because of how strong it is and how frail our attackers are so you know gets the gets the turn right there not gonna come in on this turn as we end up going for the bulk up um, we're gonna pivot into the Abra on this turn on a Psychic, taking quite a bit of damage, but not too much, as we can Shadow Ball here, as we're only gonna do 76%, they're gonna U-turn knock us out, and at this point, things are looking pretty tough for us, um, there's not really much to say, we're gonna Flame Charge here, uh, hope to make something happen, but unfortunately, HJK is gonna knock us out, they get burnt, um, we're gonna DD up here, and try to Fire, Fling, Fire Fang flinch this thing, doesn't happen, and uh, at this point, we have a bulk up timber, which might be able to get the job done, but it's not looking too likely because they can just spore us here. They're going to go pawn as we wake up. We have to hope to wake up here, which we don't. So we lose our Violite. We're going to take quite a bit of damage from Ironhead as we end up not waking up really at all. We're going to wake up here. We don't get flinched. We're going to go for another bulk up because um, at this point, we need to, we need to um, get to the point that we can mock punch the not to and then from there there's potentially a chance to win this game but not to unfortunately still has his violate and it four times resist mock punch so it's really not too likely we're gonna drain punch here we're gonna get to a good amount of health um but the problem is that um again not to is just a little bit too healthy um spore here we're gonna burn a turn they're gonna sludge bomb us try to get us low um and knock us out and that is going to be the game so definitely a tough one there um the first two turns did not go our way not really much to say about that and then from there maybe the bulk up timber could have made something happen just the natu was just a little bit too healthy so it is what it is it was definitely a tough match and we can pause it and get into the next one 
Okay, and here we have my game. We have me facing off against Doge. Uh, so Doge, obviously a friend of mine. Very excited to play him. Um, good player too. So I was uh, looking forward to our match as I know... I think we played each other in like a Swiss tournament a long time ago, back when I was a noob and he beat me there. So I was hoping to make a better showing, but unfortunately, uh, I don't roll into the greatest of matchups uh, in this game. So I'm using a screens offense team because I wanted to utilize screens. I think it has a lot of benefits, especially in this meta game where uh, speed ties kind of pre are prevalent, so you might as well just go with Magby and try to win the game from here. Unfortunately, we're running into a pretty unfor like a pretty bad matchup, right? No other way to put it. Uh, Magby obviously looks incredible; it can put in a lot of work. But the problem is that Onyx exists and is a pretty good stop to Magby. And you know, what I mean? okay, no problem. You know, Grookey then might be able to get the job done. And you know, theoretically, Grookey is a very good answer to Onyx, and that's kind of the reason we decided to pair Magby plus Grookey in this situation. Uh, but my opponent, and I'm using SD Grookey with a Violite, not Grassy Seed, meaning that Morlul is a pretty hard stop to that as well. So the combination of those two means that I really can't break past their team. And then from there, Onyx really isn't going to do much either because it is going to struggle versus Morlul as well. Uh, on top of all this, and we'll get into the game, it's not one of my proudest games. I don't think I played it that well. To be honest, uh, what I should have done is led off with my Abra right off the bat, knowing that Mianfu is probably going to be leading off. The thing with, you know, the thing is like Mianfu is always tough for these type of teams to handle, so I should have led off with my Abra to put the pressure on initially um, and kind of go from there. But instead, I end up leading off with Diglett, which is like the safer option to try to get rocks up and all that, but I don't think that was the play, and we can get into it. So, um,. Diglett's going to come in uh, versus Mianfu, and this is where it gets awkward right off the bat, because I'm going to have to figure out, like, what do I do? You know, what do I do? I can't really protect and put my rocks up, because that's just kind of a waste. I want to keep my me memento around to try to set up, you know, one of these two, but I can't set them up right now, because they will not be able to break past, you know, Marlul or Onyx, respectively. So, I go into Grookey, which um, isn't a Violite, right? Or it is a Violite, so it's forced to take this knock, and we're already in a tough spot. So... What I should have done on turn one was definitely lead off with Abra. Even if they predict that and let's say lead off with like Pawn or something, which is definitely a possibility, um, we could have, you know, switched around and kind of gotten something out of it. But this is really just a tough spot to be in. Um, and I really shouldn't have done that. I should have lead off the Abra, go from there, make the plays that I need to. But it doesn't work out for me as uh, now they're going to win a speed tie here. And I was trying to go for a knock here to remove the Mianfus of Violet to try to open up maybe DD Onyx in the late game. Um, but I end up losing that speed tie, so it doesn't really go well for me, as Ponyard is going to come in now. I'm going to go into my Onyx. I'm going to DD once, as I'm not really too afraid of what, th what this thing can do. It's actually going to low sweep me, which is always interesting to see. Um, but that's not really a big deal. I can outspeed it, knock it out with a high horsepower. Um, Moral is going to come in, and I'm going to go for a head smash. This was definitely, again, not the play. I uh, probably could have just gone Natu, as they can just Giga Drain. I didn't anticipate them to Giga Drain into my Natu, but I guess it's a fair play on their end to just go for that. Um, I was trying to weaken this thing to like maybe set something up with Onyx later, but I think this was definitely a, a, a misplay. A, another one that I didn't really play that well. I should have just gone into Natu, set my screens up, and kind of go from there. Put up, putting up a light screen, obviously, honestly, could have been great. It would have put in a lot of work and then reflect afterwards or whatever, but it doesn't work out for me. They're just going to play it safe, go for the Giga, and I've lost all of my offensive momentum in very little time. I'm going to go into Diglett, which unfortunately does not even kill this thing with a Sludge Bomb, so I lose my Sash right here, which could have been nice for you know Onyx or something, so definitely not going my way. That was a roll as far as I, as far as I knew, so uh, definitely... Uh, I uh, got a little unlucky there, but really can't blame myself. I really can't blame anything because of how poorly I'm playing the first couple of turns. So. <laughs> Mianfu's going to come in now. I'm going to protect now. Um, they're going to turn. I decide to go for the Memento and uh, see if I can make something happen with my Natu now. So I'm going to reflect up. They're going to U-turn. They're going to go into Abra as I am going to drop to a Shadow Ball. And basically, I have to go for speed tie here. And my Abra might be able to make something happen. I was thinking, like, maybe there's a chance here because I'm Life Orb Abra. Uh, but unfortunately, I lose the second speed tie. So there's really no chance uh, of anything happening now because Magby won't be able to get the job done. Had I won this speed tie, I was thinking maybe I can try to make something happen with uh, 
Magby, but even so, I don't think it was likely, just given the fact that they had Onyx still at full health, so it doesn't really matter. Either way, I end up losing this game very, very quickly and very uneventfully, uh, unfortunately, so, you know, I'm going to go for a Fire Punch here, knock them out, that's great, but then again, Onyx can just come right back in. So, I think the biggest thing to learn from this game is, first of all, screens are not necessarily bad. I don't think anyone should say they are bad because of this. Um, and yeah, this is what I was thinking. Because Onyx can't really knock me out, potentially I would be able to set up my Magby and like, uh, like fire punch them down, mock punch and fire punch them down. But it doesn't matter because they probably are more likely than not me and Fu fake out. But uh, yeah, it, it, this is all irrelevant at this point. Basically, I think if I could go back in time, I would have played this game by leading Abra, and that would have at least put me in a better position. Although still not great because Ponyer just comes in afterwards, and you know I don't really have a great switch in. I am Reflect Life Orb Abra. The idea being that I can just set up a Reflect as Ponyer kills me and set up my Magby and then go crazy. The problem is that that doesn't work because Onyx is uh, way too strong and healthy. And even if I take the knockoff after belly drumming up with the Reflect, it, Onyx, as you saw, did 80% with Earthquake. So it really wasn't going to go anywhere from there. And I would basically use up my Abra plus my Magby just to get an Onyx down to about 10%, or sorry, about down like to 40, 30, 40%. And then from there, they still have full health Moralul, a Mianfu, etc. Um, and a Ponyard. So like, it wasn't looking, or the Ponyard would probably be dead, but like, they still have so many pieces and I don't have a ton of offensive pressure. Maybe DD Onyx could do something after that and maybe that's what I should have gone for, like breaking, o breaking early with the Magby and then setting up for DD Onyx in the late game, even if that wasn't super likely. So <clears throat> either way, I don't think I played this that well and I think Doge played uh, a lot better than I did. No way, no really other way to put it. So and that's the point of these videos we're going to try to improve and learn from our mistakes so that is that unfortunately we don't have a great ss week after having a pretty good ss tour but that's just the way it goes um we can move on to the next game okay and here we have the next uh set of games we have sm so ninja facing off against whale obviously a pretty cool matchup here really strong players um <clears throat> excuse me from whale side we see a munchlax which is not something that you see too often um, but I'm interested to see what it might be able to do versus us so yeah um, I think other things to know is that our Magnemite looks decent but not great with the Diglett and the Munchlax running around our Timber actually looks really interesting I really like Timber uh, against this team uh, except for the Snubble which uh, Snubble is one of those Pokemon that does get worn down relatively easily. It does have Barrier Juice and can thief like an opposing Barrier Juice and kind of go out of control from there. But um, it can and will get worn down, especially if we're able to get ever able to get hazards up um, with like our Onyx, get our rocks up or something, and then kind of go from there. Um, our own Volibee looks good as well. Volibee is always threatening, and if it does click the right moves, Heat Wave, HP Grass. Uh, Brave Bird, that combination can be very hard for our opponent to switch into as well. So let's get right into the game here. Uh, SM uh, is always fun to watch. So we're going to see the Marini lead versus the Mianfu lead. Good play here from Ninja. Uh, Mianfu, obviously, just a generally good lead against us. So leading Marini to counter that works out very well as U turn is going to come out on the very first turn. And we're going to be able to get a knock or a scald off into the team. We decided to knock and remove in a violent off of the pawn. That's a good situation to be in. We decided to stay in here, anticipating the rocks, which makes sense, right? Pony is a big threat to a lot of teams. It can be very problematic. So um, even though they have thick, fat munchlax, um, it doesn't mean that they're like super pony proof. Obviously, they are more pony proof than other teams, but uh, lax is always going to be kind of awkward to play around or awkward to use because, you know, it's always afraid of you know a double to timber or a double to marini and then forcing a knock into the team so them getting up rocks makes sense and we take advantage of that to you know scald and fish for that burn which we do eventually get so we're now going to pivot in onyx because we're not really afraid of anything uh knock obviously is not great but we do get our weak armor procced and we can uh set up a stealth rock of our own so we're gonna see the rocks go up early which is great uh, we're gonna go volaby now um as the opponent is gonna go straight for the hjk does not knock us out berry juice is back up to full and we're back in business basically as you can see we're actually overcoat not weak armor uh volaby which is a little bit more interesting you don't see that set too often but it makes sense on this team where we don't have a good fungus absorber so we're gonna see a knock here, uh, removing the Snubble's Berry Juice, that's quite good. Obviously they have the potential to Thief, but we have a knocked off Onyx that we can pivot into if you want. So we're gonna U-turn here. We are gonna go hard into that Onyx, preventing a Thief. 
Whale may may try to predict this and go for like superpower, although they don't think they run that, or close combat. They don't think they run that. They usually run play rough, thief, maybe fire punch, T-wave or something. He ends up going for the play rough, um, unfortunately missing, which means we get a free switch in, and now our Onyx can kind of do whatever it wants. As we decide to click EQ, crit, and knock out the Diglett. Very, very risky play from Whale, and they may have been a Violite, so maybe not as risky, but, um, and they may have just lived that naturally with the Violite, but we end up getting a very timely crit and knocking out their Diglett altogether. I don't know if that was the play. I feel like. Yes, you don't have a really great switch into the Onyx, but I feel like Mianfu would have been fine <laughs> as a switch, catch all, and then, you know, HJK kind of threatens us and knock or whatever, puts us in a weird position. So, I don't know. This Diglett switch definitely felt unnecessarily risky, and yes, we did get a little lucky if that crit ended up mattering, but uh, hey, we'll take it. As Diglett out of the picture means our Marini is very much freed up, and now things are looking really, really good for us, so. We're gonna see the Marini switch in on our end as we do now get our knock, uh, or sorry, Violet knock. But again, we're not living in as much fear because that Diglett has been uh, removed from play. So HJK is gonna do a little bit. We are gonna recover that off and put ourselves in a position to just Scald into the team as Ponyard is gonna take Rocks plus Scald Chip and, or sorry, not Scald Chip, just called knocking it out. So Volibee's gonna come in now. Obviously Volibee has the potential to Z or whatever, so. Uh, Brave Bird also would obviously hit very hard, so we're going to pivot into the Onyx. We're actually going to proc our weak armor, and at this point, we're kind of running away with it. No other really, no other way, no other way to really put it. Um, Onyx is looking really, really problematic. Obviously, their Mianfu can come in on Rock Blast. Yeah, that's fine, but we end up getting about four hits, and we're going to protect here uh, as they end up going for U-turn. Smart play for there from Whale, as now we're going to be forced to go into Marini. And we're going to see another U-turn from the opponent. Trying to get themselves back into this game, but it's not looking too great. It's not looking too great. Uh, they're going to bait out a knock here. Um, smart play from their end. They're going to try to bait that knock out. And Ninja's going to read right through that and go for a Scald. Really nice play, right? Because obviously Marini would want to, you know, knock off the Munchlax's Berry Juice and put ourselves in a good position. And what I think Whale was trying to go for was, you know, procking the Juice with his own Volibee and coming in relatively safe on a knock and then trying to uh, uh, weak armor boost your way through this team so really nice play unfortunately uh, ninja was able to read that and get the uh, scald off there which does some more damage and also fails to proc any sort of weak armor shenanigans there so we're gonna see the knock now obviously we can uh, threaten this thing out with another rock blast so we're just gonna go for it no real reason to predict at this point we are very very far ahead so Ninja does not need to play that aggressive going for EQ or something. So Especially because, um, you know, Rock Blast is still doing decent damage. And um, if they ever decide to HJK like they do here, now we get another Scald into the team. And they don't really have a great answer for that. So we are going to see a Sludge Bomb here. It does about 23. Um, we're going to see a double into Timber as it covers most options. Covers a double into Volibee. It covers, obviously, Munchlax as well. Um, we're going to pivot back into Onyx now, see what the opponent wants to go for. They end up going for Brave Bird, knocking us out, taking a little bit of chip in return, and opening themselves up to Magnemite. So we're going to see the Protect. Protect usually, I think, is for other Z, Volibee, so that works out well. Probably also for Fake Out and stuff like that, I suppose, if you want to block that. But generally good mod a move to help scout stuff out. We're going to see a Volt Switch into the Marini again, and this Marini is just kind of being the MVP here. Um, excuse me, just get that turn. And we're gonna see a U-turn on this turn. At this point, Whale has to kind of give up something. Um, decides to go into Lax. This is a good play, really nice play from Whale. Has been positioning the Munchlax, letting it take a little bit of chip here and there to allow himself to prevent uh, a knock by you know utilizing the juice while coming in on rocks. So we actually end up blocking, or the we actually end up you know we're able to go for the knock, yeah, but we're not able to remove the item, and we're actually gonna get pursued on the next turn. Which does do a good amount, but because of Regenerator, we're not really in that big of a pickle. And we can just go into Timber now and, you know, start applying some more pressure. Snubble's going to come in, yeah, it can intimidate us, but Ice Punch is still doing 30%. And we have no real reason to mess around right now, no reason to risk anything. Um, so we're going to go Ponyta on a Play Rough, which works out pretty well. We end up dodging, it's a very blind Snubble, unfortunately. And at this point, it's looking pretty tough. Lax is going to come in, we're going to go into Timber yet again. Don't have much to worry about. They're going to recycle up. Um, and we're going to now sack the Volibee. Timber can just go for a Drain. Knocking that thing out. Now their Mianfu comes in, and we're going to be able to drain them twice. 
uh, healing up to full, and then drain the Munchlax and win the game. So really well done from Ninja. Played really, really well. Uh, that one turn versus the Diglett really sealed it, I feel like. At that, after that, I don't think Whale really had a chance to come back just because of how... Uh, just because of how much value we got out of the turn, and then Onyx, as you could see, put in so much work after that. It continued to block that Volibee from, you know, being too uh, too problematic. I was able to get rocks up, keep stuff out, force damage on stuff, uh, force progress, uh, force the Manfu to U-turn constantly instead of HJKing, etc., etc. So, it worked out really well there for Ninja. Played extremely well and picked up a dub. So we can pause it there and get into the next game. Okay, and here we have Oras. We have Fran facing off against Corkscrew. Corkscrew has been having an incredible season. Um, I think he's got like 6-1 and one or something. And Fran has been doing pretty well uh, as well. I think went 2-1 and one up until this point. Took down some big names. So definitely a good t match here. Uh, we do see the Corefish uh, plus Fletchling combo. And Fletchling in particular looks very, very threatening. We don't have a great fly resist. We actually don't really have one at all. Meaning that thing can really start to put pressure, and especially with um, you know Pharaoh being defensive obviously helps, and Shelter being able to take one can be fine. Uh, but the problem is that Corefish can kind of help overwhelm uh, as well. So we have a very physically uh, oriented core right here, and obviously Timber, Pawn, and Snubble are going to help in that regard as well. Our Shelter doesn't look that great, unfortunately, as a Shell Smasher, so I'm not really too keen on that winning this game. Uh, Fletchling also doesn't look great because of Omastar or sort of Ammonite plus Ponyard, um, even Intimidate Snubble. So we're going to see if we can break past this team. Pharaoh Sprit score might be able to make something happen defensively, but I don't really like our matchup. So let's get right into the game here. We're going to see Mianfu lead versus the Corefish lead. Um, obviously, they're going to pivot to Snubble here as we decide to go straight for the HJK, doing about 26%. We're going to U-turn out of there, uh, doing about another 8 I'm going to pivot right into the Spritzy, which is going to eat a play rough. Takes about 25. No big deal, as another play rough is going to come out. That one doing a little bit more. 34% on that turn. But we are going to Moonblast, pop their juice. Unfortunately, this opens them up to, you know, Thief. And we're just going to just wish up anyway. Besides, that's fine. Worth risking that, as they are going to get the rocks up. Uh, taking advantage of the damage they did to the Spritzy. So smart plays there uh, from the opponent. Now they're going to double into the Corefish on the Mianfu yet again. And that's going to just basically enable them to go back in a snubble. So we're going to go for an HJK. Again, does about 26%, but uh, we're seeing the same sequence play out. But we have rocks on our side now, meaning that we're taking even more damage. So snubble is going to thief our choice scarf. Really smart play here from uh, Fran. And I was mistaken. Obviously, this ends up being a choice scarf shelter, not a shell smasher. Maybe it is shell smash choice scarf. Uh, you know, hard to say. But really smart play here from Fran. Using, utilizing the thief mechanic to cripple this snubble and put himself in hopefully a position to maybe take advantage of that and win the game so we're gonna see an icicle speed here as that is gonna blink into the pawnier unfortunately pawnier just being so physically bulky um let's get, we're gonna be able to eat a knock and we're gonna go for razor shell getting some good damage off but at this point it's looking a little tough we decided to pivot into the foo which is just gonna eat another knockoff uh, obviously hjk here is gonna do quite a bit uh, to anything that wants to come in. We said to go for the fake out instead. Um, and now into the U-turn. As Spritzy is going to come in now. And we're going to eat a fire punch. Which does absolutely nothing. Remember the choice scarfed into that. So uh, we're going to see a wish again from our end. And it's, we're going to protect up. They're going to go for Iron Head. That's fine. we got to keep the Spritzy healthy. It's going to be one of the few things that can take hits. Uh, throughout the course of the game. So we're going to go into Mianfu now. Which ends up being a knock. Um, into Sucker as we do just HJK and knock them out. So we're able to take the first kill, but the problem is positioning wise, we're in a pretty tough spot, especially when this Fletchling comes in. It's going to acro into the Pharaoh, doing about 32, good damage. And it decides to go for the SD straight away as we end up T-waving it. And that's generally fine um, for them because they have Gale Wing's priority. And as long as they don't get paralyzed, they're still in business. So acro is not going to para there. And they're gonna get you know knock out our Pharaoh. Now Shelter's gonna come in, it's gonna try to get an ice shard off, uh, get this thing low, as Acro is gonna knock us out. Had we gotten a full para there, we'd be able to knock it out with the next ice shard, but we don't, unfortunately. And now things are starting to look really tough. We're gonna go into Fletchling of our own. Obviously, we can outspeed their priority with our own now. But they again, they still have Ponyard plus an Ammonite. So they really have the anti-Fletchling core here, as it is gonna weak armor proc, and we are gonna go spritzy on this turn, but we end up eating a hydro pump, getting cleanly to it KO'd. Um 
they decide not to risk it, they decide to go into Corefish, um, which is going to be able to knock us out with a Crab Hammer, and at this point, the Corefish is looking very, very threatening as well. They're going to go Timber on an HJK, fails to 2-8 KO, as the second one is going to take them down to 17. They're going to Drain Punch us, uh, get us down to 30%. Mock punch us to knock us out, and now it's looking like a wrap because we don't have much else. They're just gonna sack the timber correctly. Again, go into the Ammonite now, click Surf or Ice Beam or whatever. Uh, ends up knocking the Fletchling right out with the Ice Beam. Um, potentially Scarf, or potentially this a slower, bulkier Fletchling. We're not sure. We'll find out on this turn, obviously, as it is not Scarf. Uh, so it does get knocked out, but the problem is Life Orb Diglett, although strong, will just get Intimidate shuffled, and also will struggle versus Aqua Jet and Acrobatics from uh, our uh, from the opponent's end. So Gorefish is going to come in, Sucker Punch does not even come close to a KOing, um, and Aqua Jet will be able to knock us out. So we end up losing that game, tough one for sure, didn't really like our matchup, Flying Resist Pharaoh is not ideal, and they just played well. So we can pause it there and get into the next game. Okay, DPP, we have Gorex versus Daruma. Um, no team preview, nothing really to say. Let's get into the match here. So we're gonna see the Machop versus the Gligar lead. U-turn right off the bat, um, as Gorex is gonna go for the Ice Punch, getting a nice critical hit into the coughing as they are going to Oren Berry up. Obviously not a good scenario for us. Coughing is uh, one of the better answers to Machop, even with that crit, as you can see, they're out of range of the second a second crit so we're gonna go into bronzor here on a wisp scare them out with the psychic and we're just gonna get our rocks up so rocks up early is good helps wear that stuff down bronzor is gonna get chipped a little bit but we can go into our lax here on a fire punch take that pretty comfortably and pivot into ghastly on a superpower so good plays there from gorex is revealing a good portion of our team but has positioned himself fairly well around this lax so Stunky is going to come in here as we end up going for the Wisp, and they reveal to be Lumberry. Something you don't see too often, but as a 18 speed tie here, so we really hope to win this one. If we don't win this, we're in a really tough spot because, sure, we can, you know, live and, you know, Wisp them on the next turn, but uh, we end up taking quite a bit of damage in return, and we end up losing the second one uh, to a crunch and getting knocked out altogether, so. Uh, not the situation we were looking for there, but it's fine. We can go into Gligar of our own. We're going to go for the SD, take advantage of this burnt status as they end up e or exploding and taking us down to 57 after the um, after the boom. And at this point, uh, Daruma decides to go into Gligar. So when you're going plus, when you have a plus two Gligar in front of you and you end up going into Gligar of your own, that means, you know, we know that they don't have any options. And that means we also know that Gligar will win this game at this point, as long as we win the speed tie um, and connect. Uh, because, you know, this will drop to an EQ. This certainly after Rock should drop to an Aqua Tail. And uh, clearly the rest of their mons uh, aren't equipped to handle Gligar. So unfortunately, and fortunately, fortunately we win the tie. Unfortunately, we lose the, or we miss the move. And that is going to be very unfortunate for us. So Aqua Tail, um, means that you know Gligar would have dropped and from there it's uh, pretty much over as we see the rest of the team really wouldn't be able to handle this as well this would drop to EQ uh, water spout is gonna do 54% um, and uh, we don't really have a great switch and we decided to go into Machop which is going to eat a T-Bolt relatively well and we'll be able to you know dynamic punch into the squad here but um, dynamic punch is going to confuse and Unfortunately, hit themselves in confusion as we knock them out with an ice punch, but um, it's still looking tough. Dusklova is going to be the answer here as we end up going for a sub, trying to catch a wisp works out really well. So Gorex is trying to bring it back. Payback is going to do about 50%, but they can Orin Berry back up to 91. Return is going to do quite a bit, breaking the sub. Uh, Gligar is now going to come in on this turn as they end up going for payback. Probably a little risky of a switch there. Not that Gorex was going to ice punch, but there's always the possibility. Um, just because, you know, I would have maybe considered it just because, you know, payback is not a 2 KO. Might as well go for Ice Punch or something, but, um, or two, it would be a 2 KO at that point because it was doing 48%. Actually, maybe it wasn't. So maybe this was fine, but still feels like a little risky. Uh, I don't think you really need, uh, Duskull for really much else besides the Machop unless you're trying to save it for the Lax, which I guess is fair, but... Um, they end up getting the Gligar activated as uh, it's going to blank an EQ into the Bronzor. And potentially there's a chance with the Whalmer now. Uh, Scarf 
uh, Water Spout can do quite a bit of damage to everything, and we can maybe get the job done by critting Lax or something. But that's not looking too likely. So we're going to take this time to pop this thing's uh, juice. Um, because we really need to keep this thing as low as possible. So Dust Glow is going to come in on this turn as we end up going for another Psychic. Does about 33. That's fine. This is going to enable us to bring the Whalmer back in. And they are going to make the right play and go for Shadow Sneak. Really heads up play. I like that play from their end. That's going to weaken our Water Spout. And now it's going to be even tougher to break past stuff like Lax and Chin Chow. Although they weren't. Eh, they weren't getting broken past I guess that well, but they definitely are going to be able to take water spots a lot easier now. So We're going to eat a return here, um, get back up to about 66, and unfortunately lose a potential tie here. I although, with the superpower attack, generally Lax is like 9 speed, and I think we were 8 speed Lax, so maybe not a tie. Um, either way, we end up dying, and we're going to go into Machop, and we have to hope Dynamic Punch um, can like somehow miracle our way through this, because they're going to go into Gligar now. Um, we're going to go hard into the Whalmer on the EQ, which ends up uh, meaning that we can knock them out with Surf. And now we just have to hope for a crit versus the Chin Chow. So Surf ends up failing to crit, and the crit might not be able to get the job done. Either way, they're going to Agility and now speed us. T-Bolt's going to knock out the Whalmer, and Bullet Punch from Machop, I think even with a crit, would not be able to get the job done. So we have to hope for a miss there. They end up going for Hydro. I feel like they could have gone for... Uh, T-Bolt at that point because it ended up doing what 52 oh I guess the previous T-Bolt only did uh, let's see if I can find it real quick 48 so they had to go for Hydro and potentially if they missed hey we could have dynamic punch and won the game but that's just not how it goes and we end up losing so we end up going five and one in semifinals or sorry excuse me one and five in semifinals we end up losing uh, which is pretty unfortunate it was a good run uh, nevertheless again right this is semifinals so right, win or go home and we're going home now so uh, first of all, obviously good games to everyone. I think they, everyone played really well, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of really good matches, and, you know, some hacks here and there, but that's just how it is sometimes. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a good run. I think LCPL, this is my first LCPL, and I had a lot of fun. And I want to talk a little bit about my experience, so I'll let that, uh, play out now. So, yeah, first LCPL had a ton of fun. Uh, I ended up going 3-4 and record-wise, so not terrible, but not great. LPL, remember, I went 0-4. and four. Ter that was terrible. <laughs> so I end up going three and four, significantly better in that regard. Uh, two of those games or two of those losses were in XY or Oras, where I wasn't that experienced. I was playing against Splash. Uh, I lost to Splash, who was obviously a great Oras, just a great player in general. And I lost against Corkscrew, who was like six and one this tournament. So can't blame myself too much for those losses, but I really wish I would have been able to take at least one of those home. But that's fine. The SS games, the versus the Franklin, I think I played pretty well just came down to a very, it was a very close game and it came down to it so that's fine uh the other two games that i won uh ended up you know i think i played pretty well so happy with that ended up getting an act win over uh shrug so we'll take that three wins and then uh of course i lost this week which not very proud of how i played but doge is a tough opponent he played better than me and um I definitely didn't pilot my game as best as I should have. Either way, I think I grew a lot as a player and a builder uh, for this tour. I think I helped a ton with the SS prep uh, for this tournament, and I feel like I made a difference with my team, which is all that really matters to me. I want to know, I want to be able to, you know, at the end of the day, look back at the LCPL, or LCPL 11, know that I made a difference uh, with my team and helped them out as best as I could. And I can pretty confidently say that I did that while making good recommendations for teams and help building stuff out. That ended up doing you know well you know mendes pdt and well all did really really well in this tour and obviously i wish i would have been able to recreate their success um but i'm happy to have at least helped them a, li a little bit so uh yeah anyways i want to thank everyone for the uh journey definitely thank you thankful to ninja for picking me up and luthier who was helping him out uh with co-managing as well i want to thank both of them for uh picking me up i really appreciate the opportunity to play for you guys and hopefully you know uh, did the best I could and obviously had a ton of fun with my teammates. It was really fun teaming up with y'all and getting to know you guys over the course of this tournament. It was super fun and you know I'm obviously looking forward to the next LC uh, team tour which will um, be LPL. So if you guys are interested in that feel free to subscribe. I will be pushing, uh, pushing, pushing out some more LC content, some ladder lives, uh, an analysis on the statistics 
um, of LCPL as a whole. And of course, good luck to the Remoraders in the next round. Obviously, Ace and Pap are good friends of mine. Of course, Pradeesh, CM Doge, uh, Druma are friends of mine as well. So I want them to win. I want them to win it all in the finals. And I'm rooting for them currently as they are in a tiebreak of Grand Finals. So that is where we're going to end the LCPL coverage. If you guys did enjoy, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what your favorite part was. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and goodbye.